Good morning and welcome to today's International Space Station Update Hour. You're joining us now here inside in Mission Control Houston at the Johnson Space Center, where the Orbit 2 team is currently on console monitoring the systems on board the orbiting complex. That team is being led today by Flight Director David Korth, and joining him at the Capcom position, talking with the crew up in space, is astronaut CJ Starkow. And those astronauts up in space right now are the crew of Expedition 30, starting with the front row Expedition 30 commander and NASA astronaut there on the left, Dan, Dan Burbank. And on the right front row is Russian cosmonaut Alog Kononenko. Going across the back from the left, you have Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkoplerov and Anatoly Ivanishin. And they are joined by European Space Agency astronaut Andrei Koigers and finally NASA astronaut Don Pettit. So quite a bit of experiment work going on on board the station today with Commander Burbank working with the capillary flow experiment. Earlier in the day he did some alignment guide removal on the fluid and combustion facility which houses that experiment before moving into it. And that is a fluid physics research project that investigates capillary flow of different fluids in various complex containers. And this is all going to be used in the development of fuel systems and other fluid transfer devices on future spacecraft. Russian cosmonaut Anton Shkoplerov was doing some work on the Russian Electron system, which is one of the oxygen generating uh, devices on board the International Space Station. He was also doing some work with the Sinar experiment, doing ocean observations, which helps the Russian fish fishing industry identify the most biodiverse and productive areas. His fellow Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin was doing some maintenance work on the Russian segment today, replacing some of the air filters in the Zarya module and some of the dust collectors, before moving on to doing some routine system maintenance on the coolant system and relocating some Russian items in the Zarya module. The third Russian cosmonaut, Alog Kononenko, is loading some of the disposable hardware onto the Progress 46 spacecraft, which will eventually be undocked and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere during reentry. And he was also working with the Russian relaxation experiment, which is a complex look at determining the effects of different in-space propulsion systems and their exhaust on the Earth's upper atmosphere. And also looks at some of the effects that they have on the space station's environment and their optically sensitive, sur sensitive surfaces such as windows and equipment lenses. Yesterday the three Russian cosmonauts also voted in the Russian presidential election from orbit using a procedure set up with officials on the ground at the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. European Space Agency astronaut Andrei Kuipers started his day working on the HTV Hardware Command Panel. This is a control panel up on board the station used to monitor the vehicle health status of the Japanese HTV-3 cargo ship once it's launched later this year to deliver supplies to the International Space Station. He was also working with the VO2 Max today, which is a system used to evaluate the astronauts' maximal oxygen uptake and also their general respiratory performance, both before, during, and after these long-duration space station missions. And then later today, Andre Kuipers will be speaking with a Computer Expo trade fair in Hanover, Germany, where he will take some time to converse with German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff. That will take place later today at 12.15 p.m. Central Time, 1.15 p.m. Eastern Time, here on NASA TV. Then the final Expedition 30 crew member, Don Pettit, spent much of his day today working with the SLICE experiment. SLICE stands for Structure and Liftoff in Combustion Experiment and looks to investigate the nature of flames and microgravity. And then this hopes to have applications that could lead to improvements in technologies here on Earth which aim to reduce pollution emissions and improve burning efficiency for a wide variety of industries that use combustion. And then he will also be doing some routine maintenance, replacing the water container and offloading some wastewater with the water recovery system. 
The astronauts are scheduled to go to sleep at about 3.30 p.m. Central Time, wrapping up a very busy day of maintenance and experiment work.